All right, so we have a new research study that I think gives us some important information, poses some important questions, tries to answer some important questions. This actually tries to relate alcohol consumption with cannabis consumption. Uh, and again, I think it poses and tries to answer some uh, important questions. So let's get into the study. I've highlighted all of the important points, so I'll try to keep it to just what I think is important, just the important facts. Before I do, today is Mother's Day. As I film this, you'll probably see it a few days later. If you are a mother out there, first off, congratulations, and I hope you had an absolutely wonderful Mother's Day. And I will, as always, leave links to how we help people be best prepared for upcoming drug tests in the description box below, including our masterclass and our home drug tests. And I'm still trying to collect data on if people think we should continue to test for THC for pre-employment. So if you do think we should continue to test for marijuana for pre-employment, please hit the dislike button on this video. And if you think we need to stop testing for marijuana for pre-employment, please hit the thumbs up on the like button on this video. This is using marijuana reduces alcohol cravings in people who drink a lot and this is a federally funded study. I will start with a quote. We found that across the entire sample self-administering cannabis before alcohol, so using cannabis and then using alcohol, significantly reduced alcohol consumption compared to when alcohol was offered without cannabis. So what this study did was it offered people the ability to drink and one group was just offered the ability to drink and they charted or, or checked how much these people drank and then the other group they had them use cannabis first and then offered them the ability to drink and checked how much they drink and the group that used cannabis first drank less and i'll tell you by exactly how much as we move on here furthermore they continued this is the mechanism we found that cannabis and alcohol co-administration used together was associated with a significant acute reduction in alcohol cravings. This is something I've never heard before compared to alcohol administration alone. So the group, the people that used cannabis and drank at the same time felt less cravings to drink more, and that's probably why they drank less. Uh, the study funded by the National Institute of Health, National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, provides further evidence of a substitution effect in which users report replacing some or all of their alcohol use with cannabis. So it seems that people are going to use, like think of it like just a big bucket of substances they're gonna use. And if you allow them to use cannabis and alcohol both together, they both have to fill up the same bucket. Whereas if you take cannabis away and just give them alcohol, they fill that whole bucket up with alcohol. So there seems to be a limit for the amount of substances that people will want to use. And when you put cannabis in the mix with alcohol, cannabis substitutes for some of that alcohol consumption, therefore reducing the consumption. All right, moving down here, when subjects use alcohol alone, they drink on average, here's how much they drink, two self-administered self-administ beverages. So they drank two drinks when they were given alcohol alone. They chose to drink two drinks over a certain period of time. With cannabis added to the mix, the average number of self-administered drinks, the average, so was 1.5, not people were just drinking one and a half drinks, but over the, the whole group, the average became 1.5. So a 25% reduction in the consumption of alcohol when cannabis was used. And while not every participant drank less, after using marijuana, those who did reported reductions in alcohol cravings at several time points after consuming cannabis and alcohol compared to just alcohol alone, just like I said earlier. And so this is the mechanism. The mechanism of why they drink less seems to be that they just craved alcohol less when they used marijuana. And that goes against everything that I've ever, uh, you know, you hear about when people use cannabis, they get the quote unquote munchies, they want to consume more. And that's, that's most likely true for food, but it seems to be for some reason, the opposite with alcohol, which is um, pretty interesting, I thought. Let's keep moving down here. So here, it's recommended for future work to explore additional individual and contextual factors that may predict whether cannabis can serve as harm reduction substitutes for alcohol 
harm reduction being one of the two ways that that are typically used to treat an addict an addiction, so like alcoholism, which may have important clinical implications for non-abstinent recovery approaches. So abstinence is the I, I would say kind of the gold standard for how to treat addictions. If you're addicted to something, like if you are an alcoholic or a drug addict to a specific drug, you abstain. You do not use that drug. The, the treatment is not using that drug at all. How alcoholics are, are typically, the typical treatment is to stop drinking, not you can drink a little bit. There is another philosophy, although not as well accepted, and again, I don't particularly believe in it as much, that you can just treat with harm reduction. So just trying to get them not to destroy their lives or destroy others' lives, you know, it's just about reducing the amount of harm that that substance causes them to create. So they are still allowed to participate and use that substance, but we try to just minimize the harm that the substance creates. Again, in my opinion, not a great way, but it's kind of the backup way if we just abstinence is just not working. So this poses the question of is this substitution method a way to do this harm reduction method of treatment better, more effectively? So the key is, is substituting for THC better? Is substituting for alcohol with THC better? Is that is it better to use THC than alcohol? Is it better for a person's general health? Is it better for the public public safety? So them possibly driving a car, does it make them less aggressive and less likely to have the problems that people who use alcohol have, um, domestic violence problems and things like that? My guess would be yes to all three of these. That would be my guess. But again, they are saying that it is recommended that they do more research, but I think it's starting to point, they're, they're starting to point to the fact that if we can get people to use cannabis instead of alcohol, if we can make that substitution in people that, for whatever reason, abstinence to alcohol is not working, that might be a valid option. All right, let's continue down and we'll get to some research that kind of goes along with this study. An earlier survey from YouGov, for example, found that the majority of Americans believe regular alcohol consumption is more harmful than regular marijuana use. The majority of Americans, even despite the stigma that America and the United States, we still have around marijuana. Most people think that alcohol is worse. Even so, more adults said they personally prefer drinking alcohol to consuming cannabis despite these health risks. And that could be simply down to preference or the fact that alcohol is certainly more accepted than uh, THC. I mean, you you go to a restaurant, everybody around you is drinking. It's, it's a very accepted thing, culture, or simply down to habit. It's what people have done their whole lives. A separate poll here released in January determined that more than half of marijuana consumers say they drink less alcohol or none at all after using cannabis. So that kind of backs up this study. Another study, uh, which was supported by the National Institute of Drug Abuse and released in December, found that young adults are nearly three times more likely to use marijuana than alcohol on a daily or near daily basis. And th that's not to say that more use THC, but if you do use THC, you're three times more likely to do it daily than those of a similar age who used alcohol. And that poll provided more granular age-specific findings than a similar report published last year, finding that more Americans overall smoke marijuana on a daily basis than drink alcohol every day, and that alcohol drinkers are more likely to say they would benefit from limiting, limiting their use than cannabis consumers are. So people that drink heavily are more likely to say that they really should stop drinking as much than people that use cannabis every day saying that they should cut back. All right, and that's all I've got for this study today. I will leave the full study link in the description box below. Until next time, stay safe.